It is going great from what I've heard. It's like been like one of the best from the years before. So I'm really happy to come in this year and be like, whoa, you know, we're kind of like the first ones kind of thing. <laughs> At the beginning, you know, it um, it was kind of troubling because you, you didn't, we weren't suspecting all of this. And then I guess the games to come now is just like, We've been so good at it, like like we've been pushing it. It's like we want it, you know. This year, I guess it's night's time to shine, and you know, we, we just want it that bad. Welcome back to the soccer pitch on the Rockville campus of Montgomery College. Michael Brown alongside my partner, Sean Coburn. And we just heard from Cindy Clamaco, one of the Montgomery College captains. Michael Clamaco has a good reason to be excited about this team. She's a personality leader for a team that has a chance to be one of the all-time great ones here. They've clearly missed her presence in the lineup the last few games, but she's working back, uh, recovering from an injury, and we'll see her a little bit today. Yeah, we will, which is great, and you are right. She is certainly the personality leader. She just exudes energy. She's just one of those people, uh, when you talk to her, you know, she... One of the strengths she says she brings to the team is she helps organize them. She, you know, gets the, the young women together and says, all right, you guys go here, you guys go here, we're going to do this, kind of help. And having a player like that helps you get through drills, helps you get through part of the more tedious elements of practice when you have someone saying, all right, here's where we're going to go, here's what we're going to do. And that's why she's one of the captains. She's a true leader. And Kelly Wakeman told me I never have to tell her anything twice. I tell her once, boom, it's done. He, she says, the only problem I have with her is when she's hurt, I practically have to sit on her to get her to stay out of the game. Yeah, it must have been really tough on her these last few games to uh, have her sit down on the bench and uh, recover. But we'll see her a little bit out there today, and I'm sure part of that is Cindy's doing, trying to plead her way back into the lineup. All right, well, let's take a look now at the, uh, the starting lineup for both teams. We're just a couple of moments away from the opening kick. So let's take a look first at the visitors from Frederick. Well, the main offensive force, as we talk about, is Ashley Polvey. And then Becca Bowers, Ashley's half-sister, incidentally, is going to be key in the net today. And then in front of her is a defense led by Lara Burkhardt. She's a talented offensive freshman whom Coach, Jacob, Coach Jacobs Woods asked to play defense. Yeah, that uh, she made quite a sacrifice. And when I talked to Coach Woods, she, she just couldn't say enough about the sacrifice that Burkhardt had made. She's definitely one of their better offensive players, but they needed to stem the tide of the goals against. Right, you can uh, get all the attempts in the world, but if the other team is scoring goals on you, there's nothing you can do about it. All right, now let's have a look at the starters for the homestanding Montgomery College Rockville Knights. Well, Lily Trujillo, number nine, leads the Rockville attack. Christy Jacob Woods, the opposing coach, says Trujillo may be the best player in the league, and I'm not going to disagree with her. Anna Santiago starts again in goal, and she leads Marilyn Juco in least goals given up. And a big reason why the is the defense in front of her, and that's led by Julie Bowers, who was a fine offensive player in high school, but now she anchors one of the best defenses in the country, much like Lara Burkhardt. Yeah, the two of them have a lot in common. Their coaches asked them, for the better of the team, to please move to defense. They did. Uh, Bowers, by the way, does have four goals, even as a defensive starter, so that's pretty good. Yeah, she likes to step up on that offensive side, and Coach Wakeman gives her those opportunities. She makes the most of them when she's up there. All right, our refs for today, our main referee, our uh, first referee, they call them, is Gary Satterfield. Uh, the sideline refs or the lines ref, linesman refs are Greg Watson and Jim Quinn. These are all experienced guys. I've uh, watched them referee many a game, so we'll have a very well-officiated game today, no question about that. Michael, one of the early subplots we're going to be looking at is – Frederick comes in here with 11 players, and it's uh, an unseasonably warm day for a late-season soccer match. Uh, so with no substitutions available, uh, and already a team that's probably not quite as fast um, or doesn't have quite the fitness of Rockville, that's going to be tough for them to keep up. They're really going to have to play with a lot of spirit today. Uh, and playing well in this first half is going to be very key, keeping the game to a manageable score so they have a chance to get that juice in the second half of being in a close game. Well, I'm wondering if this will affect the, the, the shorter numbers that they have, will affect uh, the style of play today. Do you think they'll try to be more of a possession team, for example? You would think so. You, generally, when you see a team um, that might feel that they're overmatched for one reason or another, they'll play some players back on defense um, merely to occupy the space. Uh, if you can't 
play the ball to an area because there's a defender there. You're not going to get as many opportunities. Uh, and then you just try to play some long balls out on the offensive side and hope for the best when you get a breakaway opportunity. Well, we see both teams coming out on the field now. Rockville in white, Frederick in green, and Rockville is going to be defending the north end of the field. And we'll see who it looks like Rockville is going to be kicking off. And Rockville in the, the home whites, Frederick in the green. And you can see they're playing a 4-4-2 today, but it's almost like a 4-6. Uh, a the two forwards spread along the side, kind of making that picket fence. So it might be as we anticipate uh, that they're kind of defensive-minded today. But obviously, uh, a team like Frederick wants to come in here and get revenge. They're not just going to go for a tie today. They're going to want to win this game. Boy, that's for sure. And Rockville with the ball. We're underway here. It's, a, as Sean said, a sort of a warm day. It's going to definitely be a factor for both teams, but particularly for Frederick. And there we see the uh, offensive star there for Rockville, Lillian Trujillo. Had the ball there for a second. And Trujillo is one of those players who's all over the field. She likes to make runs on her own. She likes to receive balls and create plays. So you get the ball on her feet or you get her in open space, she's going to do something good for the team. And Rockville... Actually, both teams have been in a bit of a scoring drought lately. Rockville early in the season and actually pretty much through the midway part of the season, very high-scoring team. But they're they've played a lot of tough defensive clubs in the last two or three weeks, and as a result, their goals have, uh, have gone down somewhat. And it's one of the things that uh, Coach Wakeman has been hammering with this team from the very beginning. They've, they've won some games 4 nothing, five goals, and they still lead Maryland Juco in goal differential, but Wakeman has been hammering them to execute when they get chances. They had a chance there, a nice crossing pass from Rebecca, uh, from McKenna Smet, and they maintain possession down there. And that's a solid cross, bodies just didn't get to the net. That's, that was a little close to the goal and tough uh, to, to get that pass without going off sides, but Rockville earns the corner here. And taking the corner is Kylie Rasmick. Lena Orbe not in the starting lineup today. Orbe usually takes the corner kick, so we'll see a little different look here. Rasmick with a bender. And Frederick takes possession, and they're off down the field. And this is going to be one of the opportunities we talked about. A run out was briefly a two-on-two, -two and Rockville back very nicely. Frederick at it, doesn't have the numbers, and here's a turnover. Rockville takes possession. There's uh, Crystal Quinones. Try to set some of the lineup here by number so the folks at home can appreciate who's out there. There's Julie Bowers running it down for Rockville, number 11. And she doesn't quite clear it. And look out. But the defense is there. A good use of her body by Bowers. Uh, Allison McKinty with a great opportunity there. Didn't give up on the ball, but she just didn't have any players coming with her. Uh, and that's, that's one of the problems when you only have two forwards up. Everybody else kind of hanging back. They don't want to get beat on transition against Rockville. There's Anna Santiago, the keeper for Montgomery College. She's had a fantastic season. She's currently third in Maryland Juco and 12th in the nation in goals against average. And that's someone who's playing keeper really for the first time in her life. She, she played some soccer before, um, has a sports related asthma, so couldn't run around on the field, wanted to contribute to the game. So coach uh, said, why don't you go in the net? And that's been working out really well for the, for, uh, the Rockville Knights. Kelly Wakeman says she has the heart of a lion. She is absolutely fearless and a real hard worker. And it wasn't, I, I don't think, just a coincidence that, uh, you know, well, I can't run around, I'm going to play keeper. This is a tough position to play. She has to be constantly communicating, constantly active, even if she's not running around quite as much as a field player. And just having that mentality built in has really made the transition to being a keeper easy for her. And there's Frushauer, the sweeper for Frederick. But Rockville will retain possession. 